to everyone. Thank you for being here. It's my pleasure to present our uh, Earth Observation for Ecosystem Accounting. It deviates a bit from the original title in the program. It's more, I would say, tailored for this EO application to uh, this ecosystem accounting using a certain framework called SEA, S-E-E-A. And this work is part of my uh, postdoctoral research. And uh, also, Lars Hain, you see, it's one of the co-authors also of the uh, SEA framework. Uh, Yes, so of course, um, I'll talk about uh, EO and then the application per se uh, for system accounting. And then I'll show some like the initiatives, the current initiatives that really pushes this EOEA uh, well, uh, complementation. And I also show um, very useful EO data, very recent as well. Uh, and also platforms and tools designated for uh, for this uh, EOEA uh, complementation. And of course, we can uh, discuss more about it after. Uh, this should play, hopefully. No. I hope uh, it doesn't play, but uh, it should go around. It should, uh, uh, like it's a visualization. Uh, let's all appreciate this uh, visualization of a uh, uh, of a biomass map, carbon map produced through using radar remote sensing through the climate change initiative project. Uh, yeah, this map I've been I've, I've been using this map uh, ever since uh, I did my PhD. Uh, well, we produced a bias corrected map of this uh, uh, biomass map, and which is very useful for uh, climate modelers and uh, also countries for their uh, carbon accounting mandates. So uh, this map alone shows that, of course, uh, EO can provide such map globally explicit, which is very useful in the uh, user perspective. Yeah, I'm not sure if this slide is uh, uh, very much needed. I mean, but consider this as a refresher. Of course, EO so it's, uh, and remote sensing are interchangeably uh, well, I, 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 people often interchange the two uh, broad terms. Of course, EO is more of like how uh, we look at the planet, how we do a health checkup of the planet using the sensors, of course, uh, mounted from uh, satellites, which uh, where remote sensing technology uh, um, uh, is, is used. So, of course, EO, uh, globally explicit, regular, accurate, uh, continuous measurement of our planet. And of course, the RS technology comes when, of course, you have sensors that can depict uh, the energy uh, from uh, from the surface uh, 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 to this electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, so, of course, sensors can depict certain uh, energy depending on the wavelength also and the frequency. That's why we have optical, radar, lidar uh, sensors also, uh, remote sensing, uh, and uh, it's all about the signal. Uh, I would say. Uh, what I'd like to emphasize more is that uh, we're really indeed in the uh, EO golden era. It's like if we would quantify that, there's like uh, like really thousands of operating uh, operational satellites orbiting, of course, a planet since 2021. And um, of course, majority of that are also are uh, uh, um, tailored for uh, environmental monitoring. And uh, there's also a list of satellites that are about to fly uh, very soon, uh, so especially for forest monitoring, such as the biomass satellite, NISAR, and so on. That's what's more interesting also is that they're like uh, smaller micro and nano. Uh, it's going smaller, the satellites that fly uh, 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 for, for, uh, well, for uh, monitoring our planet. These CubeSats also is also making their own way of, uh, yeah, in, in the EO domain. And that's very much in line, of course, with uh, the, the big EO data and the, um, well, uh, data cube formats that are being more common now for this, for using this EO data uh, for uh, uh, various purposes. And then talking about um, uh, EO, uh, particularly for the environment, so we, as I mentioned, there's uh, quite a few satellite, uh, a lot of satellites that are uh, producing data sets can be used for uh, to produce maps of environmental variables. So uh, there's like a list of uh, 
uh, uh, uh, particularly these essential climate variables, which are uh, literally uh, very important for climate modeling, earth system modeling, for instance. And uh, one of them is like the biomass map I showed earlier. And of course, we are uh, we can we are aware that there's a lot of uh, global land use land cover products now uh, as high as 10 meter resolution, as frequent as two every at least one month uh, temporal resolution. Um, and of course, there's like these uh, ecosystem types subtypes that can also be mapped from EO. And that would be my the focus of my the, my slides and my remaining slides like the ecosystem the ecosystem types and features of course there's like a, a default definition of what ecosystem is and there's also like uh, like the broad uh, ecosystem types that are uh, well defined in literature but what i'd like to mention also is there uh, you can also view ecosystems as uh, as these well, these subtypes, special types like mountains, uh, basins, and benthic ecosystems, and they have uh, like a feature, of course, of of uh, the main feature, of course, is the interconnectedness. And um, in the context, say, of watersheds, they're uh, like uh, there's like a ridge to rip from mountain to the to the coast uh, connection uh, of the of a certain say watershed uh, basin ecosystem. But uh, of course, uh, uh, sad picture that uh, showing that uh, the ecosystems, uh, for in this case, the forest ecosystems are uh, degrading. Uh, there's uh, also a lot of um, uh, um, emissions coming from uh, well deforestation, degradation, as also depicted in this uh, in this slide. And of course, the more we emit uh, from these uh, deforestation activities, the more uh, yeah, of course, carbon emissions happen, global warming and climate change, and so on. So it aggravates, uh, of course, these these uh, the climate change, for instance. Uh, yeah, and talking about climate change, of course, um, uh, it's, I think it's like considered as the the biggest environmental problem of our time. Uh, it's, uh, it. Uh, but talking back on the ecosystems and of course how they can contribute to the economy yeah? of course uh, there's like uh, 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 very defined uh, contributions of ecosystems to our economy food uh, timber uh, and so on but there's also these uh, intangibles that the ecosystem provide these ecosystem services that uh, 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 say as a forest ecosystem uh, provides to the, uh, of course, contribute to the well-being of our of uh, of uh, uh, well of us. So aside from these tangible ones, there's also these intangible ones uh, uh, of ecosystem services, and that ability of ecosystem to provide these services, of course, depends on on their extent, on this and the size, and also on their condition or health. So, and these uh, aspects like this uh, system uh, degradation, depletion of natural resources, uh, when we talk about the, uh, the uh, wealth of a country, so for instance, it's not being accounted, it's not being taken uh, into uh, consideration. Uh, um, and the way we assess the economic health, uh, wealth of a country is, uh, ever since is that uh, uh, there's like a series of uh, economic indicators like GDP, which uh, is, uh, we say as an incomplete indicator because of that uh, notion that, of course, the ecosystem and uh, services they provide should also be accounted and uh, considered. Um, and that has brought to the to the uh, origin of uh, system accounting. So, uh, given the context, uh, given the rationale, of course, that nature deserves better, and there should be a systematic uh, a system that uh, can measure and uh, hopefully halt the depletion of these uh, natural resources for sustainability purposes, of course. And uh, way, a way a system to really quantify and um, assess the contribution of uh, the ecosystem to the natural wealth of a country. And of course, that could be a strong basis for crafting policies and allocating budget for, na for, for uh, ecosystem conservation. And uh, that, uh, that, of course, has gave birth to, uh, the, gave birth to the ecosystem accounting uh, uh, 
uh, context. It's like, the, as you see here, it's like the, the natural capital should be considered in uh, also uh, uh, assessing the country's nat total wealth, uh, the, and also the, towards this uh, uh, long-term prosperity and well-being sustainability of a certain country. So uh, it's, I think it's more just making nature count. And uh, of course, yes, yeah, the economic role of environment and ecosystems very much aligned with the system of national accounts uh, that I showed earlier. So we can really compare apples to apples when we try to uh, assess which uh, is an, which, which are economic contributions and which are ecosystem uh, contributions to the yeah. and uh, yeah it's, it's it's like when you say you talk about EA also it's some it's also synonymous to C yeah, or this uh, system of economic and environmental uh, counting uh, framework which I'll talk more. Uh, in the, in the upcoming slides. Um, so this EA, this CIA timeline, so it is, it's relatively new. It's like, uh, it's been conceptualized in 2009. And another key uh, timeline is the 2012, it, the, uh, the experiment has been, uh, countries, uh, there's, there were uh, uh, country pilot piloting of uh, existing accounting in uh, different countries. And then the milestone, I would say, is like the 2021 when EAC uh, became an international standard uh, by UN uh, Statistical Commission. And there, after that, there's uh, been a lot of push, uh, policy uh, push to uh, imp for countries to implement system accounting also. Uh, particularly in Europe, I, I think there's like a way, Europe is really leading in this uh, uh, implementation uh, uh, of system accounting. And there's a lot of encouragement also from the national, uh, from international uh, bodies, and just to highlight uh, some some encouragement also from them. Uh, here's some some quotes that uh, these people uh, um, um, said about uh, yeah, the yeah the EA implementation. Yeah, but talking more about the framework itself, so. Yeah, it can be broadly categorized as uh, well. Uh, there's there's like physical accounts and monetary accounts. So the monetary accounts is uh, dependent on uh, uh, the physical account, of course. And um, here here is where sorry, where uh, you define the ecosystem. You we have a map of the ecosystem, ecosystem types, and their extent. Uh, you also should know should uh, be able to map the the condition of the ecosystems. And those are the like, system stock accounts. And also you can have a, like a flow accounts where the ecosystem services like carbon sequestration or say water regulation service is quantified and subsequently monetized. Um, so it's just by definition, it's a systematic framework to measure yeah, the contribution of ecosystem to economic activity. And the important thing here is it's very dependent on maps, on um, on um, well EU products, for instance. Um, and, and given that it's considered a specially explicit system, so to uh, do the accounting, to create these accounting tables, you need map inputs basically. Yeah, and it follows, of course, uh, as, uh, some a lot of guidelines and standards on how to uh, define ecosystems and. Uh, uh, they follow a certain uh, taxonomy typology also uh, defined and um, yeah so just like uh, it's like a uh, the the CIA documentation is also I should have put a link here but uh, it can can easily see it online and it's like um, yeah it, it's like a very comprehensive uh, uh, framework. Uh, so just to um, emphasize more how it works, like how to really do EA or create the accounts. So as I mentioned, it starts uh, with the extent ma uh, map. So here you can also see the associated uh, map with it. And you have like a certain condition, like uh, say a uh, background biomass that define, uh, that's a uh, uh, condition proxy. And then the physical ecosystem service, which is in this example, uh, timber but could also be regulating service like carbon sequestration, as I mentioned, and um, 
uh, flood regulation or erosion control or uh, and many more. So there's like a list of, uh, also that can be found in uh, like the CIA documentation. So once this is this uh, from map to table has been uh, produced, the physical accounts, it's the, the, uh, the role of the economist to do the valuation or the monetary uh, uh, tables, the, the valuation uh, method and the associated monetary accounts uh, uh, next in, are dependent on this uh, uh, counting table from the physical aspect. And then of course you have uh, uh, an asset at the end of the day. So I uh, diving more into the EO EA uh, complementation. Uh, as I say here, it's a dynamic duo. Uh, 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 yeah, of course, as I mentioned, it's uh, doing EA is really uh, uh, well. Ecosystems per se are, are of course special features. You can map it basically. And uh, with EO, you can uh, actually do EA at any special extent. Um, well, you can do EA at any countries and or, or and EO allows uh, the, uh, make, makes it possible, of course. Uh, and I talked about this a while ago, that EA is uh, really an, uh, inherently a special account. So it's, it's very map reliant. And um, yeah, of course, there's some EO map products uh, that can directly uh, provide the requirements to create extent and condition accounts. Uh, but uh, the ecosystem service part, it's more of like a special modeling task where EO play a role by provide by being by by um, providing map inputs to the special models used to. Uh, to generate these uh, existing services, for instance, like, uh, of course, so when we do hydrologic modeling, uh, rainfall runoff modeling, we are, uh, of course, the map requirements there would be, of course, land use, uh, land cover, uh, topography, um, slope, soil. So those are like, uh, EO play, uh, role, plays a role in that uh, context. Uh, yeah, this is to emphasize more how exactly EO is used uh, for EA in terms of uh, mapping the system and their extent. So it's, it's basically a classification task when we uh, try to map the ecosystems, ecosystem types. Um, yeah, and of course, given now the the, the high temp spatial and temporal resolution of EO data, uh, we can uh, also, of course, have uh, high spatial temporal resolution of ecosystem uh, types also. And uh, yeah, well, uh, the ecosystem types can be there's like a, uh, of course it's country to country uh, at country to country basis. So compared, uh, uh, of course, this example has like a, a lot of uh, ecosystem types. Uh, it's like uh, the Dutch accounts. Uh, uh, so the. My point here is like uh, ecosystem types can be as detailed as uh, as, as this map, and it uh, yeah it's, it's uh, quite possible now that uh, the, the direction for creating the extent uh, would be uh, towards this uh, ecosystem subtypes. Uh, and then a slide a bit uh, about the uh, ecosystem services, how uh, EO play a role in that is uh, as. As I mentioned, as a map input to these special models. So some key examples here, like uh, here we try to map uh, uh, the, the flood extent and the associated risk with and without deforestation. So so this is with uh, without and uh, with deforestation uh, in, the, in, in the Philippines. Uh, so of course that this wouldn't be possible without a uh, nice uh, a DEM input or uh, in a uh, of course a very detailed uh, uh, built-up area uh, mask. Uh, here's like a map of uh, the recreation value of uh, of uh, Palawan, Philippines, uh, which is very tourist uh, fav tourist favorite destination. And here is like a like um, uh, it's also possible to to quantify the service the mangroves provide to uh, protect from uh, the coastal community from storm surges. So, yeah. 
So the, of course, this model, this uh, model out, this outputs, these ecosystem services are possible without, of course, the, the uh, map inputs uh, you provide. Uh, this is like a new uh, paper that uh, also maps, we try to map the carbon fluxes uh, in the past decade uh, using multiple EO data data sets. So uh, here we also uh, map not only the, the sequestration, but also the, the, the carbon sequestration, but also the carbon emissions in five countries. So this is, um, yeah, no, it's a data-driven approach that really use uh, 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 like at least 10, 12 EO data to, uh, that explains uh, carbon uh, fluxes. And then it's also important, of course, to uh, uh, map carbon emission very timely, uh, also in an accounting perspective. So in this work, there's like a, a colleagues from Mackinac University uh, developed this uh, real, almost uh, well, near real time carbon emission uh, monitoring uh, from EO uh, products. And then a slide about the ecosystem condition. Um, there's actually a long list of condition uh, in the SIA framework, in the SIA guideline, which can be categorized as a biotic, abiotic, uh, um, yeah, biotic, for instance, like a standing biomass, uh, biotic, for instance, is like, um, well, uh, sal so, uh, salinity, water salinity, uh, and so on. Yeah, and and then um, also like this growing initiative to really uh, um, uh, well implement this EO EA uh, um, uh, well, well initiative is like there's like a formal or uh, initiative that uh, um, uh, then the first uh, main uh, major activity happened last year where uh, a group of uh, EO uh, practitioners and environmental econ uh, and ec economic uh, uh, specialists uh, yeah, gathered to assemble this uh, EO for EA initiative. Um, so it's also guided by, uh, well, of course, the SIA framework, uh, the, the implementation of SIA framework. And uh, of course, the main goal is to, uh, of course, to, to how really uh, to provide this case study, this, this, this case studies, these uh, in actual implementations and, and learn from each other. Because uh, country to country uh, uh, exchanges also matter in this uh, context also. And also, of course, research, research uh, exchanges. Uh, there's, uh, you can visit the website here and you can see like, um, uh, like the numerous examples uh, categorized uh, the, uh, the, uh, it's like uh, the ongoing researchers, uh, researches and initiatives. Uh, that, that's I think they categorize it based on the EA component, whether it's like a, related to ecosystem extent, co condition, and ecosystem service. And also, there's like a, so the, the economic part where the about monetary valuation of, of the accounts. So just um, uh, an FYI, so as I mentioned, there's like a strong push uh, to, this is like the current uh, countries that, this, that already compiled the accounts, but there's more, really more to come in, in the coming years. Uh, as I mentioned, the policy push, of course, there's this EU Green Deal, and also the EU is preparing a, a, a legal proposal for, uh, of course, uh, European countries to really uh, make this uh, required. And then there's also like a lot of global initiatives that uh, that are implementing ecosystem accounting using earth observation also. One is this uh, the, the Maya project and of course the Open Earth Monitor project. Uh, ecosystem accounting is part of the, the project. There's also uh, several more that uh, that's really uh, uh, it's considered a global initiative of EOE. And then just to highlight some uh, recent data, EO data says that I think of utmost uh, importance to offer this uh, system accounting, particularly for, uh, say, for uh, uh, water water regulation modeling, this uh, certain DM, uh, of course, the, the carbon, uh, biomass carbon maps, also important to, as a condition indicator. Uh, global land this uh, data sets from uh, the Maryland um, uh, group and many more. 
And speaking of many more, I just browsed uh, very recent data sets that could also uh, be useful for this uh, EA, and I found uh, uh, like a, uh, like this uh, fresh from the press, I would say, data sets. Of course, uh, EOA to increase user uptake, also uh, country adoption and all. So there's also uh, these recent uh, interactive platforms that that uh, where users can actually do generate and compile the accounts uh, online. So of course, it's uh, like it promotes rapid EA uh, and also promotes transparency and reproducibility. Uh, and uh, of course, visualization and uh, yeah, so useful for stakeholder presentation also, especially for politicians. So just uh, examples of uh, this interactive platform that uh, where users can do system accounting. And I'd like to highlight several of them. Uh, very interesting is also and very mature is also this ARIS platform where it's, it's, it's like an, uh, based on machine reasoning, uh, users would type a certain, I uh, would, uh, uh, well, would say that uh, they need a uh, system account on this watershed and this temporal period. And uh, the system in ARIS would provide them like the, uh, like the most relevant data sets to use to, uh, for this uh, system counting in that context. Um, um, and of course, there's this, uh, uh, another one is from the Maya viewer, which is this one. And uh, also uh, specific for carbon accounting, this NASA map uh, multi-mission algorithm platform is also very, uh, very uh, dependable uh, platform. Uh, just uh, so my last slide, so I'd like to highlight that uh, we're, uh, uh, it's very exciting in the context of EOEA that we have like a analysis ready, ready data sets, uh, a lot of EO products produced from state-of-the-art methods, AI-based methods. Uh, there's like map viewers, online tools to uh, support uh, system accounting towards rapid EA, uh, high spatial temporal uh, resolution of uh, accounts, which is very important for in the for system accounting. Um, and of course, that also paves the way to uh, create scenarios also considering climate change. But there's also some challenges. Uh, of course, we would not like to have, uh, well, uh, uh, we can expect a lot of data and information overload. There's a lot of EO data and products that are get, uh, being produced. Uh, um, and of course, uh, we also might expect uh, increasing data sources of the same environmental variable like uh, like biomass, carbon, for instance, there's like at least 20 choices uh, of uh, that uh, uh, product. So um, users should also take that into consideration. And that's where map assessment uh, will play a role also. That's my third point, the map EO products validation and uncertainty uh, assessment. And of course, uh, it also requires a bit of uh, uh, technical domain requirements and some logistical hardware software uh, modeling background. But uh, with the advent of these tools that does the work for us, the carry the, the, the heavy work, I think uh, the future is bright for this uh, ecosystem accounting. And, and um, yeah, I think that's all from my side. I would say salamat po, which is thank you in uh, Filipino. Thank you very much, Anand. And now it's time for Q&A. Any questions from anyone? Anything you would like to ask Anand on this presentation? Okay, it looks like there's none. So thank you again. Thanks, and um, this brings Maybe. us. Okay. Uh, please, anyone? <laughs> I'll feel bad about it, maybe. <laughs> yeah, feedback or comments or suggestions, anything. Yeah. Oh, sorry? Do you have a question to ask? Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, someone is uh, already like, uh, is quite familiar with the ecosystem accounting. Uh, the CIA framework, the SEA, or 
Yeah, it's, uh, it's, as I said, it's a relatively new uh, framework, 2021. And this EO4EA initiative is still like uh, on its first year. So you might, uh, of course, definitely hear uh, more from it like in the coming years, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, if you say EO4EA, you also mentioned the people for EA. Uh, initiative. Can you put that a little bit in perspective? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, of course, the end goal of EO is to have to us have like a the basis uh, that these ecosystem services are sustained, so that the well-being of humanity of uh, the beneficiaries like us uh, are is uh, uh, assured in that context. So I think this People for EA is a new initiative that really dives into these country cases and uh, how country can, uh, can learn from uh, uh, that another country in terms of uh, compiling the accounts because ecosystem services can be country dependent. Like in mountainous areas, uh, you, you would expect a lot of uh, erosion sediment uh, regulation service of uh, say the forest ecosystems. And of course in a, like a flatland, uh, you can expect a different ecosystem service. So, so it's more tailored to this uh, uh, certain ecosystem services type and how, of course, the how how the services quantified are, 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 are the methodology that that quantifies the services are also, of course, in coordination with the stakeholders and the policymakers. So I think that's uh, yeah, so, the so main basically issue. what you're saying is that if you develop a model for, let's say, the Netherlands or something, then you could also be partially apply it to Belgium or Northern Germany or... Mm, exactly, the especially the methodology part, uh, because yeah. this concerns like uh, not just the much. modeling, but also the monetary valuation that also uh, associated. Thank you. Yeah.